cortical dysplasia, it's uh, the most frequent cause of uh, a severe epilepsy in children. Uh, and it's, it's the second in the adult population. So it's very frequent and it's frequently uh, associated with epilepsy that's very difficult to treat in terms of uh, medication. So usually these patients are very refractory. Uh, they continue to have seizures despite of optimal treatment with the available anti-convulsive uh, medications. Uh, and most of the time, uh, when it's possible, they have to undergo uh, epilepsy surgery uh, in order to control uh, seizures. And even after surgery, uh, it's not the majority of patients that will uh, improve or and uh, just a few will be seizure free. Um, so it's a very important cause of, uh, of epilepsy to study, and this motivated us to uh, perform the work. Another uh, interesting issue is uh, the fact that uh, currently we're more and more seeing that animal models of human disease, usually they don't reproduce well all the important hallmarks of disease, especially when we are interested in testing new uh, medications. So from what I just said, it's obvious that uh, focal cortical dysplasia, it's uh, an important um, uh, etiology of epilepsy that needs the development of new drugs. So we're very motivated in um, constructing a, a model that it's closer to what we see in patients. So that, that's why we decided to do uh, the organoids using material that we obtained from the patients. And uh, this was actually material that we obtained, some of them was material that we obtained from uh, patients who underwent epilepsy surgery. Uh, and uh, then we developed this model in vitro uh, that is, uh, represents um, uh, most of the development of the uh, cerebral cortex. It's a very simple uh, model of a human brain uh, in a dish. Uh, but the advantage is that it, it, it is derived from material from patients. So we believe that this is closer to what we have in patients compared to any animal model that might be uh, used uh, in research for focal cortical dysplasia. And this is actually the first time that this type of model is developed for focal cortical dysplasia. I think there are two main findings. Um, well, the first is that we're able to generate the, the organoid that uh, recapitulates a lot of the characteristics of uh, what we see in patients, of the lesion we see in patients. So uh, if you look at the pathology, it's very similar. We have the abnormal cells uh, that we see in focal cortical dysplasia type 2. Uh, and uh, I think that one of the breakthroughs of the, the work was that we're able to show that there is abnormal formation of uh, uh, neuronal circuitry uh, that in certain conditions can present uh, discharges uh, that are very similar of what we see in focal cortical dysplasia. So it's a very good model of the, uh, the pathological lesion, but it's a, also a very good model of the abnormal uh, circuitry uh, leading to uh, abnormal discharges. And uh, I think, uh, so uh, the, the first uh, um, uh, characteristics, I mean, uh, the fact that we're able to recapitulate many of the, the characteristics of focal cortical dysplasia as seen in patients is very relevant because this could be a model to test uh, new drugs, drugs that are uh, medications that are developed or repurposing uh, uh, different types of medications, but we can test this first in this uh, brain in a dish. So it makes it much easier. And uh, it could be even more effective than to test in uh, animal models. And the second thing is that this gave us the opportunity of uh, looking at 
uh, some of the molecular abnormalities, uh, which gives us some clues of what's wrong or what went wrong during development for the malformation uh, to develop. And we, we have identified some key elements uh, that, um, um, and this may be used in the future uh, to develop new types of treatments.